It's been hundreds of cycles since I've seen another Decepticon. The last time, my former compatriots raced past me through the tunnels. I watched from the shadows, satisfied to see they were still alive, but never reaching out. In all that time, there has never been a seeker overhead. Megatron, old friend, I was worried I had the wrong coordinates. You know how the rest seas mess with our navigational systems. That was the point. I told you to stay away from here, Starscream. I hate to see any of my soldiers like this, even, especially the foolhardy ones. Well, you know what they say about me. As much as you shove me away, what? I am forever your, your loyal lieutenant. You fool. The gases of the rust seas are already threatening to eat away at him. I can't leave him on the surface. Being in Starscream's presence, it's as if the universe's most inconvenient virus compels me to fix the poor bot. I choose not to think of how I send my coordinates out to the Seekers in case they needed me. They can't possibly still need me. Yeah, I imagine this is what a Dinobot chew toy must feel like. It's certainly what I imagine one would look like. Stay down, Starscream. What happened to you? Body scrappers. Blur is the one responsible for most of this. I do not feel panic. Why? Where? You fighting body scrappers. I wasn't looking for them, I assure you. I don't know how, but they got wind of my recent activities. Now there's a sizable bounty on my head. I must have been overheard, or maybe they've been tracking me since I went out in the desert. The other option is much less pleasant than Jeff. Well, if it's a second. There's nothing that can be done about it now, is there? <coughs> anyway. So this is where the great Decepticon leader Megatron has been living. Starscream understands, certainly. Can even utilize it when pressed. I'm not falling for this one course topic change. I like the quiet. So much so you barrel under the ground like a driller. What do you want, Starscream? The lack of a pressing war is no excuse for long-windedness. You know, this reminds me of the first time I ever saw you. Do you remember? The day you showed up demanding to join the cause? As you show, you tried your hardest to make yourself memorable. Ha! It still sings when I remember how many times you turned to me away. I wasn't keen on putting a scholar on the battlefield. I didn't want to carry that burden. So you said, more than once. But no, that was the first time I spoke to you. It was during the early protests in front of the Senate. You will step away from us. Slowly, Officer Prowl, I do not relish repeating myself. I was at the Senate arguing for public funding for my work with Jetfire, and you were outside. I was told that you were making noise, but that wasn't it. There are regulations about these protests. Your buddy Radbat over here was far too close to the building, as are you. Is that your excuse for placing your hands on him? A reason to attack those that you see as beneath you in society because you are so rarely challenged in your reckless abuse of your authority? Hey, if my dear friend Ratpat wasn't on this side of the protest line, was instead part of the weak excuse for a counter-protest from earlier, would you have laid hands on him? So many of the bots in the city have grown comfortable with this pathetic hierarchy you've set up, where those of us that labor so that you don't have to are worthy of nothing but your cruelty. It is amusing to see you sputter when confronted with someone who is done with your blame. You are out of line, Megatron. If you remember my name, I'm not sure why you thought I'd allow you to raise a hand in my presence. You may get away with things because your friendship with the Senators and Orion protects you, but you and your mining trash are still subject to our laws and- uh, Say that again, Prowl! Uh, say the word trash and you'll see what this trash is capable of! And I hope you do run off to tell my friends what happened here. Tell everyone. I admit to being a bit naive before then, not truly seeing where our government was heading, but seeing you stand up in that moment, 
declaring yourself not as a Baldam, but as their equal. I had never seen that before. Not an icon. Are you done with your revisionist history? Excuse me? It feels odd to poke holes in this memory that my former second in command clearly adores, but he needs to hear it. What you saw as a great moment, I remember as the first time I was arrested. The rest of the miners got feasy, but I was trotted out and chased by officers. One of the first examples they had of what happened when you did not stay in line. It is not a moment worthy of romanticizing. As I recall, the drama of it played a large part in Radbat's eventual election to the Senate. For all the good that did us. So why don't you tell me why you're really here? Is it not that I ran to where I knew I'd be safe while I healed up? No. I came back to ask for your help, Megatron. I need you, because, as you can see, I've got a Titan-sized target on my back. I could attempt to recruit others without your help, but you'd be better off that way. If things are as bad as you say, you need a leader. But I am no leader. What do you mean, I'm free to go? You heard me. Someone higher up decided this isn't worth our time. Again, surely he wouldn't have interfered. Megatron, good to see Jail didn't treat you poorly, even if you would have deserved it. Good night, Orion. Thank you, Orion, for getting me out from jail and erasing yet another disorderly conduct charge. I know how poorly our friendship reflects on your ambitions and plans while you try to bring order to this planet, so it is greatly appreciated. Feel free to add a few of your non-committal grunts that you do whenever I'm right, if it makes you feel better. I owe you nothing, Orion. After all the times I've vouched for you, I think you do. These silly protests need to stop, Megatron. I'm tired of you dressing up chaos and calling it rights and empathy. None of that mattered until you riled up every bot with this Decepticon nonsense. Now I spend half of my time cleaning up your pathetic messes. My messes. I'm fighting against what you and your secret police did to Shockwave. You reinstituted Impurator to break a bot that was supposed to be your friend so that he would stop fighting your men in the Senate. You thought you could take away his compassion with torture from a bygone era and then he tried to fight against your men. You replaced his hands and his head with one seaboard and recognized. The surgery went wrong. You made that same empathy consume him, overwhelm him. Megatron, listen to yourself. My secret police, my men in the Senate, you are spouting conspiracies because you're letting your emotions overwhelm you. If I have the power you say I do, I'd watch your voice box, unless you wanted to join Senator Shockwave. How dare you! That's enough, both of you. Stop right this instance. Don't touch me, officer. I don't know how many times we have to go over this. What would you like us to do here, Pax? We could charge him. No, no. I am off duty. This was personal. You could have joined me, Megatron. Been on my side if it weren't for your. That's where you're wrong, O'Brien. You may have offered me a place at your side. But I never could have been on your side. That was the last time we spoke before the war. To this day, I wonder about the times he pulled strings. Was I complicit in letting him do so? Did I do it because my bots needed me outside with them? Or was I masking my own selfish desires? Perhaps I spent my time in the Ross Seas, making up for the time I should have spent in other cages. You know, if I were the dramatic type, I might say it looks as if you were hoping to rust away standing like this. But you'd never say something like that. No, I would never. I can't be what you're looking for, Starscream. I, it must be unforeseen damage to my voice box that makes me hesitate. I'm not the leader of the Decepticons anymore. I respect what you think you understand about my influence, but that is not my reality. You would be better off recruit- Absolutely not, Megatron. I did not come all of this way to leave empty-handed. I need you. I am not your commander anymore. I once had that title, but I was never worthy of it. You may have forgotten what my leadership cost us. Allow me to remind you. 
I know normally I would offer up words that Lieutenant Starscream wrote for me. He is better at language than I, but today I speak to you from the deepest corners of my spot. Some of you came to Earth with me when I crashed, helped me heal my wounds. Some of you came later, after we discovered rarefied energon, and knew we had to protect this planet and its resources from Optimus Prime and its so-called Autobots. We have made mistakes, and perhaps Earth will never go back to what once was. But change, evolution, is not the end. Not for the humans, and not for us. So today, we keep up the fight, so that we all might see what the future holds. Do you really believe all of that about the future and this being with it? I don't have patience for lies, Thundercracker. One would think you'd know that. This has to be worth it, and I promise you, even while things look dark, it will be. We will triumph. I fought like a fool on the battlefield, a fool who threw myself at a monster. I had hoped it would come to this, old friend. We are past friendship. We are past nothing, Megatron, until I say we are. No! Earth crumbled beneath my feet, collapsing under the weight of our war. I decided then I would be a martyr. I have never followed your orders, Prime. I see no reason to start now. For Earth, for Cybertron. Fine then, for our cause. How dare! Martyrdom is laughable, and I know that now. Ugh. Give up, Decepticon! Because once your wish has been granted, there is nothing left. I'd laid there for what might have been cycles, decker cycles, or pillow cycles, until I could hear the footsteps of neither Decepticon nor Autobot. No repairs and looking at a job, I waited for my spark to go out. Megatron, leader of the Decepticons, had died under the boot of our greatest tyrant and I had once called him a friend. When my spark proved too stubborn to give up, I scoured the land for a ship that may have been left behind. I packed myself up and worked to repair the ship. As I'd soon discover, I should have stayed on Earth. By the time I returned, most of us had scattered or died. Optimus and Goldberg and Prowl had resorted to infighting the Autobot Warlord's tree. I never took you for a coward, Megatron, but apparently I should have returned that to cycles ago if this is the nonsense you have come up with in the meantime. Nonsense? I know you do more than replay what I've said, but if more words are too difficult at the moment, would you like me to tell you what you have forgotten? Because I remember it differently. We go in the battle led by a fearless, dashing leader. Starscream, don't worry. He had equally dashing soldiers in his back. Starscream! Huh. Always one the secret of it. But that wasn't what he spoke about after that battle on Earth. He spoke about his same coming up with a point blank shot that led to Bumblebee needing a new body. We drank to the vision of you taking down wave upon wave of Autobots. And how tyrants fell at your feet. Starscream, I... Perhaps you saw yourself as a martyr. But to us, you were a hero. Optimus Prime! Optimus is on the horizon! Oh, good. I wanted my spark to get stuffed out today. You're never not pessimistic, are you? So we run now, right? You run. I will stay behind. Absolutely not, Commander. He will kill you. We were always going to kill one another. It was just a question of whether it was here or on Cybertron. No, we're not leaving you here. We'll fight with you. It doesn't make any sense. Enough! If you stay with me and fight, we will all die. If I go with you, he will hunt us all down, and we will all die. I will stay behind and buy you time. You will round up as many Decepticons as possible and make it off this planet. I don't care if you go to Cybertron or another planet, but it will give you time to have a head start. Starscape, Thundercracker, Skywalk. I need you to do this, not for me, but for what we stand for. Is that clear? Tch, Thundercracker, I'll get the ship ready. Commander, I... There was nothing for me to say. I followed your orders. 
and following her orders led us to escaping. I didn't see you fall, and I didn't know how long you spent on it. But what I do know, you say you're not a leader because we lost. But that loss wasn't on your shoulders. Neither was a bot called villages all over. But those that survived that day, we lived on because of you. Because you were willing to lose to keep us alive. I have no right to ask any more of you, Megatron. And I know that. But we are scattered, living as if Cybertron is nothing but an abandoned junkyard for Decepticons. We cannot exist without a leader. And I know of no one else that the Decepticons will rally behind like the bot that saved our lives. Starscream has always had a way with words. I want to believe in more than I believed in anything other than Decepticons in my life. Even if I accept what you are saying, Starscream, there is no cause for you to rally behind. That is true. Last time we knew anything about what is happening, but you've been underground a long time. And things are different now. I may have changed things. Excuse me? Starscream, your theatrics and need for a stage are more charming now than- Sit down, Megatron. I am not some newly awakened spark, Starscream. I do not need to brace myself. <laughs> Funny you put it that way. Remember we talked before, theoretically, about using my spark as the ultimate indestructible safe. What if I told you? That was no longer theoretical, Megatron. What if I told you that we can use what I have inside of it to wake the Titans? We can take back Cybertron.